Mike, the mic is yours. Doesn't Mike look amazing? <laughs> Mona Amel, the Engelsman is here. So, here, Chatons. I was watching a movie the other night, and there were two cops in the car on some stakeout. And the one said to the other, no, I'm going through difficult times. And the other one said, do you want to talk about it? And he said, I just did. <laughs> so I absolutely, yeah, I know what you're saying, Entis, but as Neil said, it's not about us, you know. And today I, I want to really start with a very important statement, first of all. I didn't lose Dorothy. I know exactly where she is. I know exactly where she is. And in my career, I'm used to saying something in 30 seconds, because if you can't, then you've lost them. But today, because it's not about me, I'm going to say a little bit more. I wrote some notes down because I wanted to really share some really key things. But even as I was sitting there and listening to, to Niels and to Entis, oh, sorry, thanks, I realized I do need to give some detail for context. Uh, and so, yeah, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will guide and lead me in, in that. Ephesians 5 verse 20 says, Always give thanks to Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as many of you know, I had the honor and privilege to accompany Dorothy in her walk with the Lord for nearly 38 years. Her passion and love for the Lord, her family, friends, was always very, very evident. And in all of that time, her faith never faltered, even during very testing times. And I'll share a little bit about the testing times, but to give you context and not to focus on the testing times. Dorothy loved the Word of God and had many favorite passages which she memorized, and she often quoted them in our prayer times together. But today I'd just like to highlight two. And the first is found in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter three, verses 16 and 17. And he writes, and I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Another of her favorite portions of scripture is Psalm 91, which she quoted often, but I just want to focus on verses 14 and 15. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. And you will find and feel my presence, even in your time of pressure and trouble. We left for Germany around the end of October. And we were in quarantine there for 10 days. And during that time, <clears throat> things started to go very, very wrong very, very quickly. And I really was struggling to know what to do and how to help. And on a Sunday night, a very good friend of Dorothy's, who became a very good friend, an oncologist, a German oncologist, phoned her on a Sunday night at 8 o'clock and just said, how is it going? And Dorothy said, well, I think I need to see you. And she said, come tomorrow, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And I just said, Lord, how on earth could I have ever done any of this? And I realized I must start to relax and stop trying to do everything and be the answer for everything. We went to go see her at eight o'clock on a Monday morning. She then referred us to a German professor who happened to be, and if you heard our previous testimony, happened to be the brother of the oncologist that we spoke to on a previous visit in Germany. So we went to see the professor and we saw him in the afternoon at two o'clock. And he said, basically, you've got three months to live. But we'd heard this before. 
For the last four years, we've heard about three months to live. And he had a whole group of students and doctors around him, and he came across a little bit hard and very direct, as is the German medical style. But he said, go home and think about it and pray about it. And so we did. So I said to Dorothy, well, what, is, what do you want to do in this? And she said, well, I'm not going through chemotherapy again, not for the fourth time. You know, this is, this is too much now. So I said, okay. She said, no, if the Lord wants to heal me, he must heal me. He must heal me completely or he must take me home. So I said, is that your final decision? She said, yes. I said, well, I'm going to pray about it as well so that we can stand together. And she said, but even if he doesn't heal me, I'm still going to glorify his name. So the following Wednesday, we're back with the professor. But this time he doesn't have any staff, any students, it's just him. And we saw a very different side of him. And he said, have you reached a decision and have you reached it together? And we said, yes. We've decided we're trusting our heavenly father for complete healing and we don't want to go the chemotherapy route. And he said, well, I respect that. And if there's anything that I can do to help, then we're here for you. But we totally respect this and fine. So we ended up in hospital two further times and our trip back to South Africa was scheduled for January the 22nd and you'll understand why that's important shortly. And we could see things were going very, very bad very, very quickly and we really needed to get back to South Africa. I don't know how many of you have tried to book a flight from Germany to South Africa in December. Yeah, it's a very busy route. In the meantime, the Lord had worked in my daughter's life to make sure that she had no further patience and she joined us in Germany. And she came not only as a daughter but also as a medical professional and I bless the Lord for her because there were times when I really didn't know what to do. But she was there and she could guide me in wisdom. We found three seats back to South Africa on December the 22nd. And again, I just say, thank you, Lord. We spent the end of the year with my two sons and their family and my daughter all together. And we had a really, really marvelous time. And I just say, praise God. And then my one son got back to Brazil, and I won't go into that, that was also miraculous. So that was the pressure we were under. All of a sudden now we have to go to hospital. And so she's back in hospital here in South Africa with some godly, godly doctors and nurses. I was just amazed to see their love and compassion. And the doctor said to me, Mike, you know, she's dealing with three life-threatening diseases right now, and any one of them is really hard for a person, let alone three. So she battled with that. And the Lord then took her home on January the 18th, on a Monday morning. And I was able to go to the hospital several times, which also is a miracle. And the sisters said to me, they were nursing somebody that was so kind and gentle, even up until the last. And she eventually just closed her eyes and just left. And I was able to testify with them and say, yes, you know, she, the sister said, we see many people dying in this ward. It was a COVID ward in, in a hospital in, in the southern suburbs. And he said, a lot of them are struggling and fighting right up until the last minute. She just closed her eyes and just left. And I could just testify that that was why, because the Lord had come and said, it's time to go home. I was reminded, and you know, here in Wellington, we have a statue on the main road of Andrew Murray. And if you've re read his autobiography, you'll know that when he went home, his body was finished. There was nothing more that his body would take, and the Lord took him home. And when I was looking down on Dot's body and looking at her, she had been through a lot. You would never know when you spoke to her and saw her, but her body was finished, and the Lord knew that. And I just say now, thank you, that she is now with the Lord in a brand new body. She's in there in the chorus group, I'm sure. She's in the praise and worship group. She'll be running around and she's having a whale of a time there. And I could tell you why, but I'll rather do that personally with you. 
As I opened with Ephesians 5.20, always give thanks to Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse says, and out of your reverence for Christ, be supportive for each other in love. And I just want to thank all of you in the Shofar family, especially our life group, for all the love, the support, the precious memories we've shared together with Dorothy because that continues to comfort and encourage me and it certainly challenges me on a daily basis. But I know, no, and as Hintus has said, we now need to run our own races until we then also go meet her and meet our saviour, Jesus, face to face for all of eternity. Amen and thank you for listening to my 30 seconds. Thank you, Mike. What a blessing.